Well, haven't done this in a while. Let's piss some people up again. Hello, Internet. I'm back yet again, here to ruin your day once more. I mean, maybe. I don't know how you're going to react to this video. But uh, as we all know, Honkai Star Rail 2.0 has been out for quite a while, with us even being at the tail end of the patch at this point. And uh, I'd say uh, it's pretty safe to say that it's been a roaring success so far. People are loving Penacony, the characters, the gameplay, the gambling. Um, uh, but you know, most importantly, the story. Wait, freeze frame, stop here. Okay, her, she is the problematic one. Yeah, yeah, I get it all out, but before you turn me a new hole open for daring to speak ill of our precious little princess, please listen to what I have to say first. And you know, if you end up agreeing or enjoying the video, then maybe consider liking, commenting, you know, all that good stuff, ringing the bell. I'm trying to go 100% into making general gacha content here on YouTube, so your support would mean the world to me. Now, before we get into the real topic and the nitty gritty of my issues with Firefly, let me first emotionally manipulate you by giving you a compliment sandwich of all the positives in 2.0 so that maybe, just maybe, you would reconsider dipping my whole body in an acid bath. So first things first, Penacone itself is absolutely stunning. I've heard some people say it's similar to the low food based on the previews we got before the update even came out, but you know, I'm happy to say that it very much has an identity of its own. Bright lights, constant traffic, billboards, the nighttime aesthetic, it all just screams Vegas and I absolutely love it. Although the cool thing is that it doesn't even really stop there. The other areas of Penacone are just as good, with the uh, Dream's Edge having this serene city during dawn feeling, and that combined with the beautiful and constant meteor shower just makes it feel both sweet and, like, really sad. Which, uh, you know, let's just say it's fitting considering what happens here. Oh, and, uh, Dreamscape Reverie is alright too, I suppose. I don't dislike it or anything. As a matter of fact, it might be the most creative area with all of its mind-bending geometry and stuff. But I just like the other two areas more, I suppose. I mean, what can I say? I guess I just love it when the mood of the place you're in reflects both the feeling that the story is trying to portray, but also the characters, well, you know, character. And you know, speaking of characters, let's talk about those. Now, this section is not about the story and the characterization, but rather the cool gameplay or meta shakeups that were introduced in this patch. And oh boy, there were some meta shakeups. First of all, Black Swan came into the game and proved to be quite a versatile character, <laughs> even if you're not going for a dot team. Sure, she might not be beating Pale at shredding defense, but you know, she's good enough and does plenty of damage on top of that, so uh, if you have nothing better, then she slots in pretty well in any team. But of course, when we look at how Black Swan changed the dot meta is when we really start to see the sauce. This woman swooped in like Tarzan on a vine and single-handedly elevated dot damage into the highest tiers of strength. And yeah, some people will say that Kafka is still the linchpin of that team and that she's more future-proof and so on and so forth. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love Kafka. She's my favorite character actually. Uh, but uh, you know, matter of fact is that currently, currently, uh, you can run Black Swan for top tier damage, even on her own, while Kafka still really needs like help from other people to get to those kinds of numbers. Although again, when these two women are together, be ready to eat some of the fattest damage procs I've ever seen in any game. And speaking of doing tons of damage, Sparkle. Specifically, probably tons of emotional and psychological damage. Anyways, uh, Sparkle came in like a storm and is currently crushing all sorts of content. I remember people coping and saying there's no way she'll replace Branya before she came out, and uh, admittedly, I was among those people to an extent, to an extent. But clearly, everyone was wrong, and she ended up being a very versatile character that can slot into even more teams than just Daniel and QQ teams, which is great because uh, one trick ponies are usually not that great since that everyone will find those characters interesting or desirable. W wait, not not interesting or desirable. I feel, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I just, I keep having this nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. Hey, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't all that important. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and you know, speaking of things I haven't experienced yet, but heard good things about, the side quests in Penacone are actually pretty good. 
I won't spoil them since I feel like a lot of people have only now started to hear how great they are, so everyone is rushing to do some of them, but I'll just say that they're pretty good and well worth your time. And, um, uh, and, okay, well, I suppose I've run out of topics to prolong my crucifixion, haven't I? Alright, let's talk about the story. I won't bore you with any long-winded recaps, so just have a spoiler alert from now until the end of the video, and uh, let's get into all of my problems. First of all, I feel like most of the story just doesn't work so far, in the sense that we don't really know a whole lot about the family. Combine that with us also not having any reason to care for Penicone or the citizens, either beyond the standard reason of we have to do the right thing, and the only real connecting emotional thread we have left between us and the story is Firefly, but... Oh wait, she dies. And to be honest, I'm not even upset about the fact that Firefly is the focus of the story and that the family and Penicone is secondary. On the contrary, Firefly's story and themes fit extremely well with Penicone, so it's fine to have all the, I suppose you could say, uh, political stuff going on in the background. So, um, you know, it adds stakes and intrigue to the story. But the part that actually pisses me off is the fact that Firefly's potential is just not realized in the main plot. Sure, she was being nice to us, taught us about Panacone, about her tragic condition, everything. So she's extremely likable, but then, so what? Ultimately, she accomplishes nothing, doesn't reveal her full backstory or her goals, and then she just dies. Which, even that felt really abrupt. Just like me after I post this video. If you wanted for her death to feel truly impactful, then I feel like what should have happened is that maybe after Black Swan pulls us out of the dream, we could have went to meet Firefly in the real world and truly see the devastating effects of her disease on her body to empathize with her even more. You know, maybe she could have also told us more about the true happenings of Penacone and uh, who she is, or maybe she could have set us uh, on the course of getting to the Watchmaker, or so on and so forth. Just something, anything. But we get none of that, and then she's just gone. She just dies to a giant space loser shortly after we have that incredible and emotional moment with her on the roof. And her character just goes to waste. And on a side note, it's not really the main topic of the video, but exactly the same issues and more go for both Robin, who got maybe 5 minutes of screen time before she died, and then Duke Inferno, who got capped off screen! What kind of disrespect is that? The dude got an entire trailer to himself and was built to be a big bad guy even in-game during Dr. Ratio's quest, like even outside of the trailer that he got on YouTube, but then Acheron just makes him and his whole gang look like a bunch of losers. And if anything, just makes me much more scared of her. Which, just to be clear, I don't think is a bad thing. I like Acheron. But to do so at the expense of someone else is just really weird. And if we ever have to fight Acheron and then we beat her, then, you know, any subsequent encounter with the remnants of the Annihilation Gang is just going to feel like a joke. But, whatever. Basically, to summarize it all, Firefly's life and death was kind of pointless and made me a bit upset. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not me saying that I hate the character because I actually happen to really like her. I'd say she's easily in my top 10 favorite characters in this game, but I can't help but just think that there was some missed potential here. It kinda goes for all the characters who died, but especially for Firefly since we were the most emotionally connected with her, it just feels the worst with her. And eh, uh, fuck it. I'm not getting out of this one alive anyways already, but let me still try to recover my public image a little bit by pointing out a few things that I actually liked about this story. I think Aventurine is actually a pretty interesting character, with us not being entirely sure if he's good or evil, which is great, and also fits into the themes of the story, and same goes for Acheron. I wasn't really sure what to make of her at first, but, you know, the reveal that she's the emanator of death, or, you know, if Aventurine is to be believed at least, then it's pretty cool, but weirdly enough, I don't think she'll be our enemy at the end of the day, but uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Black Swan though fought a bit, underutilized in my opinion, basically being used for a plot twist and not much else, so hopefully she can at least stick around to play the role of a secondary character. Uh, yeah, that, that's it, that's literally it, there's nothing else to talk about with her. But finally, for our final character, and yes, I will not be talking about anyone else because if I can count the amount of lines you had on my one hand, then you're not worth my time. I am so sorry, Sunday fans. <clears throat> Uh, but uh, yeah, the final character to discuss is uh, Sparkle, of course. Here, I think they had an absolutely incredible hit. No wonder she's Hoya's new favorite child. She's just genuinely evil, entertaining, mysterious, has a good design, actually does stuff in the story, 
and has some of the best scenes. Yeah, she's just solid. And uh, you know, I can't wait to see either her or maybe a certain other man potentially end up as the ultimate final villain by the end of all this. Or honestly, whatever they do with her, as long as she keeps being a horrible, unforgivable human being, I'll just be happy with Sparkle, as she is right now. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for all the 2.0 thoughts. Oh, and uh, actually, yeah, the music absolutely slaps in this update. But yeah, I think with that, I have talked about everything that there was to talk about in Panacone and this update in general. I just hope that you guys will be nice and don't go too crazy on me in the comments because um, at the end of the day, this is just all my opinions. As well as before anyone starts writing anything, I know that it's just the beginning of the story, but I was judging it as we have it right now. So please, if you made it this far, keep that in mind. Because outside of just the one thing, I haven't seen any story spoilers. And I can't predict the future, so if you start talking about something that happens in 2.0, like leaks and stuff, then I mean, I literally cannot have a response because I haven't seen it. And so with that, this round of pissing people off is done, so I'll now go lock myself in a bunker to stay safe from the riots. But uh, I still hope that you guys enjoyed my rambling, and uh, if you would like more discussion style content on both Star Rail and other gacha games, then uh, I hope that you consider helping me out by subscribing. I put a ton of effort into this video and uh, as a matter of fact I had the whole thing recorded once already but uh, I just thought that it turned out like trash so I scrapped and remade the entire thing from scratch so I would really love it if you subscribed. It doesn't take anything and uh, you know you can always undo it later if you want to. And I also try to respond to every single comment that I see so if you would like to continue our discussion then uh, we can do it there. If you know you disagree with anything or if you have something to add, I would love to see what you have to say. But for now, stay safe, take care everyone, and see you in the next one. Bye bye. Why are we still